Hello everyone and welcome to Pyanodon's Mods. This is Otaku Showboat and in this tutorial I'll be going over the Quartz or Processing Chain. Now as usual, don't forget to engage through commenting, liking, subscribing, and hitting the notification bell to help make this tutorial series visible higher up in search results. If you'd like, you can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash otakushowboat, follow me on Twitter at otakushowboat, and visit my website at otakushowboat.com. You can also help to support my continued existence through Patreon at patreon.com slash otakushowboat. There's a theme there, if you couldn't tell. Also, as a disclaimer, Pyanodon's mods are in a constant state of flux, so any numbers that I present may change in the future. In fact, it's quite likely that they will change in the future, so do bear that in mind. Uh, and the mods for this particular save file for this tutorial uh, are nearly identical to the mods used on my stream save that I am currently doing, the first Planetons stream save, which those mods are linked below in the link to my website to the stream schedule page. The only difference is that I am using the Infinity mod to help showcase the various processing chains. So with that said... Let's get started with the Quartz overview, shall we? So Quartz is not as complex as what we have been covering thus far with Iron and Copper. In fact, this is probably going to be a relatively short tutorial video because it's just not that many steps to go over here. So, pre-science, you're just going to be doing ore to plates, or ore to glass, I should say. But once you actually start the chain at Red Science, this is what you're going to be looking at. So, step one, jaw crusher, or to crushed, or to crushed quartz. And then you have the option of making glass directly out of crushed quartz. Or you can process it into powdered through a ball mill. And that's where your Red Science capabilities will end, is powdered quartz to glass in a high pressure furnace and that's all you'll get access to it for a long time because the next step unlocks only at blue science so there is no quartz step at green science as of the current pinedons mods setup of six mods. Perhaps I should have said that in the disclaimer as well. This is running the entire Pyanodon suite as currently exists, uh, and this is pre-release before Pi Alien Life hits, just for future reference. For one, the Hydrocyclone actually requires uh, Neobium Pipe, if I'm not mistaken, so that alone would delay it, but this whole process is locked behind blue science anyway, which means you'll have everything you need to make the hydrocyclones by that point. Uh, in, th in which this case, it's powdered into a pulp 1. The pulp 1 gets processed into a pulp 2. Pulp 2 into prepared quartz. And then prepared into purified. So purified is what you get access to at blue science unlike most other ore processing chains blue science does not give you access to high grade and you also do not have access to reduction or centering i guess it doesn't really make that much sense to do reduction or centering at for glass but uh yeah so high grade glass or quartz here won't happen until utility science or yellow science uh, and it will give a uh, requisite boost to your production at that point so there's the simplified version of the chain minus any outside inputs and minus any byproducts 
let us actually take a look at this. Because this is such a short chain, I've decided that I would build out fully each step along the way. So, pre-science, as soon as you start the game, now, glass is very important. You're going to have to get glass in order to get your first red science that you will, in fact, be handcrafting. So... That means that in, before you're even able to get science, you're going to have to be able to make the crystal mines. You're going to have to be able to make a crystal mine. Now, what is involved in making a crystal mine? That's belts, mining drills, soil extractors, circuit board one, and small parts. I'm seeing here this is a lot of iron and copper. So you need to set up your iron and your copper and save up enough uh, in order to make those things. Now the soil extractor, Mark 1, will be your burner, mining drills, and tinned cable. So that means that even before you're able to do quartz, you're going to need to have set up a uh, stone furnace line for tin as well. So tin, iron, and copper furnace lines will need to exist before you can get your first furnace line of glass actually going. Uh, and you're going to need 38 stone furnaces to process a yellow belt of ore in, and it will give you 2.5 ore out for the 15, or 2.5 glass out for the 15 ore in at this point. Now, it's functionally identical. Once you do get access to advanced foundries, it is always very important to do this upgrade uh, to hot air processing in advanced foundries because it will give you a about 50% boost to your efficiency, uh, and it will use half the amount of advanced foundries as stone furnaces because advanced foundries are twice as fast as stone furnaces. So 19 of them to process a full belt and you're using about 30 units per second of hot air to give 3.75 of red. Uh, again, numbers may change in future across the board and not all numbers uh, are guaranteed accurate either. So step one in red, you have the option after crushing your quartz which will give you stone that you have to deal with as a byproduct do bear that in mind that you will have to deal with stone as a byproduct from this first step and that's pretty usual across the board most processing chains will produce stone and or gravel uh, really relatively early on in their chains that you have to deal with so do bear in mind that if you would prefer to void stone, if you have steel and you don't have titanium yet, you do have the option instead of setting up titanium to burn the uh, stone in burners, you can make a washer and create saline water and pitfall the saline water in a glorious sinkhole. Uh, so this is pretty much just locked behind steel, so if you set up a little bit of steel to make just a single sinkhole, you can deal with all of your byproduct stone by building a wonderful little washer, which is just iron and copper and stone bricks to handcraft at this point in the game. Uh, so you can just make one of those, plop it down, shove in all the uh, stone, and sinkhole it. Now, the first process for getting glass here, taking crushed and coal gas into glass. This is going to use about 150 coal gas per second. Now, how are you going to get that much coal gas at this point in the game? Chances are you do not currently have access to tar extractors, 
you might not have the chromium set up for this yet, nor the lead. In fact, if you do have the chromium, you might not have the lead. So, and the lead would require setting up a whole acetylene line uh, and all of that nonsense. And then chromium will require syngas to mine in and of itself. So, uh, tar extractors you might not have to do uh, the production of coal gas out of gasifiers. So there is a recipe to make coal gas out of tar. This is a very nice recipe, but there is something a little bit better and more sustainable if you have the resources to build enough mushroom farms. Uh, in fact, phalagi plantations are circuits, tin, iron, copper, and that's about it. Wood. Lots of wood. Uh, if you've set up wood at this point, automated your science, you can start to transition into attempting to get into automation of your mushrooms, especially if you've taken the time to set up your initial circuit board one automation at this point. But point is that if you have mushrooms, you can eventually be able to convert your mushrooms into coal and then convert your coal in a DDC into your coal gas. This is going to be your early game coal gas anyway, so that you can do your aluminium mining that you'll need to do early in the game. Uh, so coal gas is used in a lot of things. You're going to need a lot of coal gas. Uh, and the only real way you're gonna be getting a lot of coal gas really early in the early game is by converting coal and then also having a secondary to convert coke into uh, a little bit of ash uh, if you want to deal with your coke and get a little tiny bit of extra uh, otherwise you can just use the coke uh, for other things but do know that you're going to want to have this constantly moving and what this does is this gives you we go down to one this gives you coal gas and tar, uh, in which you can convert the extra tar into coal gas. You can convert the extra tar into coal gas. You will have to deal with some iron oxide, as well as some ash uh, in all of this, but getting the coal gas shouldn't be that big of a problem, especially if you are just straight up mining coal. Uh, you should be able to... Uh, bring in enough to make somewhat sufficient amounts of coal gas to take care of your aluminium mining as well as to take care of your glass production. However, this only gives you 4.5 and there is one more step after this, but the next step is a little bit more of a pain in the rear end because instead of just needing coal gas in this next step, A, we are now powdering we are making powder in a ball mill from our crushed we have to now deal with gravel as an output and in order to process all of our powdered we are now not only going to need 150 per second of the coal gas we are now going to need three or 15 per second of pure sand 15 per second of pure sand. Now, pure sand you can get just out of water inputs and dealing with tailing outputs. Uh, if we look at... No, don't pick up a Mark IV washer. At this point in the game, you only have access to a Mark I washer. If we look at the washers and if we look at the soil extractors uh, that we we are going to need. So, to do this, we do soil, sand, pure sand. All of these will require water in, uh, and these two will produce tailings out. So we need 15 per second minimum on pure sand. 
which means we would need 20-ish, a little bit less than 20 sand per second. Uh, in order to get that much sand per second, that's 8. So we have 8 and 8, and then 60 per second on our soil extractors. So about 17 total soil extractors, and then have to deal with all of the logistics involved with this. Uh, but in the end, we get an a whole major boost over the previous step. Instead of being 4.5 per second on the output on glass, we're now up to 6 per second on the output of on glass. Is this worth doing? Yes. If you have the resources to make the actual buildings and you have the belts to do the logistics work or have figured out ways to avoid belts by doing some direct insertion, uh, if you're doing direct insertion, it's going to be a little bit higher on the number of soil extractors because what you can do is you could have, say, soil extractor, soil extractor, feed them in and sort of just do something like that until you have eight of these uh, washers. Uh, and that should be able to feed in enough to all of them, uh, enough soil, or at least sufficient amounts of soil uh and if i if you do that it's like f not 15 per second on soil in so it's slightly less than the full output on the washer so either just add one or what you can do gravel gravel can be converted into sand in a jaw crusher gravel into sand you could also do stone into gravel in jaw crushers so you can deal with your stone and your gravel by making sand and then input priority sand going into your pure sand line J just as a, a note there that you can do that as a way to deal with your byproducts uh, and then make additional sand to feed into this process but you're going to be stuck on this process for a while. Uh, you get access to it at Red Science. But you're going to be stuck with it through the entirety of green. So you have the option of finding more quartz. Because quartz, well, crystal mines are really big. Uh, chances are you might or might not have a quartz patch large enough to give you 15 per second anyway on the input. Uh, definitely try to tap into multiple ore patches if you are having trouble with the total output of glass in the early game. Because uh, 6 might be a bit constricting uh, for your red and your green science. Glass will get used in both of those processes. Uh, more heavily on the red, I believe. So do keep that in mind that if you need more, you're probably just going to have to go out and tap more quartz patches for now. For now. Then we get into blue science, which now adds the hydrocyclone, scrubber, two centrifugal pans, and then the high pressure furnace at the end. Now, the only real things here is that in this first step, you have to deal with tailings. In this second step, you get... You need sand in, regular sand in, for a 50% chance of an iron oxide out. Of an iron oxide out. So do... Bear in mind that you will have to deal with this little bit of iron oxide out in this step, and you need your sand in. Going forward, this next step requires slacked lime. Slacked lime uh, is next, so do bear in mind that you're going to have a bit of a coke cost when it comes to slacked lime. Lime can come straight from water from soil extractors, lime is coke plus limestone, and then slacked lime is pretty much just water plus lime. 
uh, in a building, chem plant, something like that. Furnace? I don't know. I forget. I think it's chem plant. Is it chem plant? Please don't be wrong on a tutorial video. Uh, yeah, slacked lime. Right there. Water plus lime equals slacked. Um, at this point in the game, at Blue Science, this is where I uh, am confident in saying you should have the resource output to have automated your thalagi plantations and are capable of mass producing them. Uh, and as such, have the ability to get as much coal and therefore as much coke as you could ever desire. You should also be setting up uh, very net positive energy production plants uh, at this point, getting lots of energy for water and space uh, that is much more efficient than the uh, space requirements for um, solar panels. So by this point, you won't have to worry about the coke or the slacked lime anymore. Uh, so it's not, it's a non-issue bringing slacked lime in for this. Similarly, the next step requires creosote in, and uh, again, tailings that you have to deal with. Creosote is tar, and as I have just explained with this process, if you have mushroom-based coal, if you have mushroom-based coal, you have as much tar as you could ever desire. As well as as much coal gas as you could ever desire, as well as much saline water as you could ever desire, and as much tailings as you could ever desire. Anyway, that uh, that is a topic for another time to uh, cover in a, a little bit more detail, but uh, if you want to see that in action, you can watch my uh, current first Pyanodons playthrough stream. So creosote, that's fine. It's a tar processing unit to make tar into creosote. Really simple. You should have plenty of that by now. And then the last step for processing for the actual casting is going to need pure sand, coal gas, and sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate. I do think you should have already set up sodium carbonate as part of your circuit twos somewhere. I, f I forget. Definitely involved in the uh, getting to blue science process. Uh, sodium carbonate as part of rayon. Uh, you needed rayon to get batteries to get molybdenum mines because you needed molybdenum for a specific building uh, along the entire process of getting up to blue science. So do bear that in mind that sodium carbonate will be used in plenty of glass recipes going forward, uh, as well as being used in rayon. So chances are you have already have your sodium carbonate set up from the rayon, so send in a little bit here. And then the amounts of pure sand and coal gas are incredibly reduced in this step. And your output is... I There's no... Sadly, there's no tilde, like approximate symbol here, but it's approximately 15 per second out. Uh, it's just shy, just ever so slightly under a total of 15 per per second out over time. Bear that in mind over time. And uh, yeah, you should have access to Mark II stuff here. That's why I put a single Mark II uh, high pressure furnace, uh, just because you should probably be able to make these uh, at Blue Science relatively easily. You probably should be thinking about if you haven't already started automating your Mark II buildings. Um, but yeah, so it's not... 20 out it's not making full use of this yes you can see that it does like back up a little bit but that's not 
a truly accurate representation because it is consuming the full output here while being still backed up. Uh, so just having it limited to the 15 here uh, is just fine. It's it for all intents and purposes. Let's just say it's 15 ish. 15 ish. If you really want to use a red belt to try and eke just a slight bit more and not have to deal with like back ups, it's just because it produces it produces 150 units of glass each cycle, and it's that's 10 seconds at 15 units per second to clear when the cycle time is 11 seconds. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. So that's blue science. Moving on. Everything's the same up until here. So here we add sulfuric acid and syngas. Which, by this point in the game, you're at utility science. You probably have production facilities giving you infinite amounts of sulfuric acid out of coal gas by now uh, or various other ways uh, you probably also have infinite amounts of syn gas from coal gas coming out of your mushroom based coal uh, in the DDCs and likely have setups where you also convert the tar into coal gas and of course coal gas into syn gas with oxygen uh, is quite uh, efficient at this point to give you basically infinite amount of syn gas, uh, and you're really not having to deal with too many byproducts outside of just the tailings here. So then you get into the actual casting. Now the casting is where you get into a few little issues. Well, one little issue here. Uh, this is the first time we're seeing fuel rods uh, being used. Uh, in this tutorial series, if you've been following it thus far. Uh, so sodium carbonate, you should have syngas, you should have sand castings, you should have hot air as well. For this hot air recipe, you do have the option to not do hot air. The difference is only two plates. It is literally a difference of two plates per cycle. So it's not that much of a difference, but it's a difference. Nonetheless, and uh, so fuel rods, uh, you should have them by now at Yellow Science. I would, I would hazard a guess to say that you should have fuel rods by the time you get up to Utility Science and unlock this recipe to get uh, to do high grade processing of uh, quartz. Uh, my suggestion, as per usual, would probably be the Neobium and an excellent plate recipe uh, to attempt to avoid the uranium use. Uh, if only not just because uranium is sort of rare, but also because the ways of getting infinite amounts of uranium require particle accelerator. Uh, you can make uranium in particle accelerators, but particle accelerators use a lot of power each. So you're still probably not going to be having a lot of uranium uh, unless you're really willing to throw a lot of power at the problem. Uh, the only issue here is niobium uh, does require drilling fluid 3. Uh, if you plan on doing ground boring uh, at some point to get a stable infinite supply of your ore types, if you do have that type of mindset of wanting uh, stable infinite supplies of your ores and want to do ground boring to achieve that, Neobium will require drilling food 3. You might have set it up by this point anyway, so I say this one, unless you are just flooded with uranium and doing uranium processing uh, otherwise there are better options but uh, yeah with that you will get over 40 per second on the glass out here versus the 15 at blue science so it's it's a massive increase in glass one that would be 
well worth it. If not for something off to the side. I would highly suggest this. If not for this. Now, I'm going to give yet another disclaimer here and say yet again, all numbers are subject to change uh, going forward. Uh, all I can tell you in this is that at this point in time, as of the recording of this video, sustainable quartz is very, very reasonable without ground boring for it. Because there is a recipe for classifiers that allows you to convert sand into iron oxide, gravel, and crushed quartz directly. In a single Mark II classifier, you can make 4 units per second of crushed quartz out of 40 sand. That is 50% more crushed quartz than a yellow belt of quartz ore. So just feeding a single one of these will give you more output by processing it than a yellow belt of ore in. And you can do this anywhere that you want. This is perpetual and sustainable. It's just water and power and space. Water, power, and space. Uh, to get quartz, but more importantly as well, you're getting one per second on your iron oxide because it's a 50% chance of production and uh, actual craft time mod does not take into account uh, percentage-based outputs. You get you get one per second on the uh, iron oxide that you can turn into plates at this point or just directly used. You can count on that one per second existing and you can also count on that uh, 8 per second gravel. Well, what can you do with the gravel? You can turn that gravel into stone wool to feed a zipier to feed into your various zipier rendering processes, uh, including, at this point, collagen. So you can use this to help with stone wool to feed zip zipier to make collagen. That's how I found this recipe to begin with, was I was looking for... A good way to get gravel, to get stone wool, to get to feed uh, zipier coral reefs, to do zipier rendering, to get enough skin to feed into my massive collagen production on my stream save. So that's how I found out about this. Uh, in order to get enough sand out, thankfully it's sand that's required here, so it's not an extra step to get pure sand, but uh, pure sand wouldn't have the impurities of this now, would it? Uh, so, Mark II machines here, bearing that in mind, it's six washers and like, oh, I don't know, 19, 13, 13 soil extractor Mark IIs. Bear in mind, I am using Tearsif's, uh module overhaul for pinodons, that's why modules are so high uh, at the moment, but uh, yeah, even without modules, as long as you can throw enough water at the problem and can deal with the logistics of moving the soil into these machines and moving the sand into this single machine, copy paste, ad infinitum, you have all the glass you could ever desire. So, with all of that said, we have reached the end of the glass overview tutorial thingy. There's not really too much to say outside of you'll probably have more than sufficient enough glass at the blue science phase if you set that up. You might struggle a little bit in the green science period, uh, which can be solved by upscaling, doing more mining. If you have the resources at Mark 1 equipment, just uh, pretty much double this, you can do sustainable quartz, but uh, you might have other things on your mind at that point. Otherwise, the inputs at 
all of these additional steps are well within reason by at the times that you can set them up. The real thing here is probably going to be your coal gas as the bottleneck for a little bit as you set up uh, more production and your factory grows to the point that it can actually fuel your coal gas. So with that, I would like to thank you all for watching. This has been Otaku Showboat. If you have enjoyed today's tutorial overview, I would like to again remind you to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And also, head on over to twitch.tv slash otaku showboat to leave a follow and turn on notifications to be reminded when I go live. You can also follow me on Twitter at otaku showboat. Visit my website at otakushowboat.com and support my continued existence through Patreon at patreon.com slash otakushowboat. I hope to see you all on the next tutorial.